All right, here we go. Uh, just brought this guy in, the Amazon gal just delivered this. And so we're gonna take a look what's inside here. Here we go. Looks to be in good working order. I think we can get rid of that. Got the DJI Maverick 3 Pro. Looks good. Let's get rid of this plastic. Don't want to injure the box here, so I'll be careful about that. Pull that off. Everything looks good. And let's, got one little piece of tape here we're gonna have to pull off. And can I get it off without ripping it? And causing an issue, that looks like it's good. And, all right. There we go. So it looks like it's already pre-packaged. So let's just slide this out like so. And it feels like we got an accessories box right here. Let's take a look at what's in the accessories box here. So we've got the plug. Um, whoa. It looks like some sort of adapter, maybe for European. Uh, let's see. We've got another plug. Another plug. I guess they want to make sure that whoever gets this, whatever country they're in, they get the right plug. And another plug. And let's see. Looks like one more plug. And what do we got here? Take a look at this. I to uncase it without breaking a bunch of stuff. Okay. Okay, after playing this with this for just a minute, I figured out these are the indie filters and you pop that open and then the case opens like this. I was pulling and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but there you have it. There we go. DJI, and then this pops, and what do we got here? Well, don't you know that I might have to actually look at the instructions for this part? Yeah, we'll come back to that. Battery. You can tell by the weight of this guy. So it sure feels like it, or maybe the charging pack. Yeah, charging pack. See that okay? Yeah, all right. And Let's take a look inside the bag here. So we'll just hit this little guy right here. And, oh wow. Okay, so we've got, looks like in here, got a little owner's manual. Nice. This looks like the props. And carefully pull this out. Well, there's the main unit. And RC controller. And this looks like charging cables, connection cables. Looks like a place to charge multiple batteries. And then I'll bet, ooh, I can tell by the weight of this, this is where the batteries are. So one of the first things I'm gonna be doing is getting these batteries charged. So I'm gonna set this over here 
for a second. And let's take a look at the batteries themselves. I believe I should have three batteries somewhere here. There's one. Okay, so battery, battery, battery. Okay. This is, I think, the charging unit. So that's the charging unit. And I can just tell by the leads here, this is going to go something like that. Probably just set in there like that. What else we got? Let's set this main unit over here and the props over here. Let's get all these batteries situated. Let's see, let me get this guy out. One thing I am curious about is how much charge these are coming with. So let me take a look here. Uh, that looks like zero. So definitely gonna have to charge before we do too much. I'll uh, check this one. Zero, and he's gonna go on here. I kind of find it hard to believe that they ship them without anything on them, any sort of charge. Now let's take a look at the controller here. I know just what you wanted to do, watch me open up packages, but might give you an idea if you're buying this, what to expect. Ooh, that is nice. All right, here's what I'm seeing. And you can see in the back here, you've got the little nodules, control flight sticks, and then looks like the antennas will just flip up like that. And this guy, I'm sure, will need charged as well. Let's see what's in here. Um, here we go. We've got two, looks like, charging cables or connection cables. Ooh, and those are extra control sticks, RC control sticks. So that's a good thing to, to not throw away. And it looks to me like the drone is got the propellers already attached. That's awesome. So these are probably spares. So spare props, spare controller paddles, and then let's see. We've got all these different plugins. I can see these three are not for the US. This one's not for the US. It looks like this one, this one, we got three that are US based. So that's good. Okay, now I'm going to get out the owner's manual or the quick start guide and find out what's next. All right, I'm gonna take a hot second and show you uh, just because it took me a minute to figure this out. So. The main unit, you've got to take this, pop this off, and then this comes off of here. And then the first set of arms is kind of easy. The front arms fold forward, and the back arms fold to the back, to the rear. That will get you in the configuration for flying. And then you pinch here to pull the battery out, and that's what's next. Okay, now the charger, main unit, and then what it looks like happens here is there's a simple plug here. This will go into the outlet, and then these two cords go in the front here. One will go to the battery pack, and one will go, it looks to me like the middle unit of the uh, remote control unit. So let's get that set up. It's time to register the drone. And I'm gonna take you all the way from the beginning, from finding the website and so on and so forth. The only thing I'm not gonna do is if you don't already have a FAA drone zone user ID, you'll have to create that, but that's just like every other website. So um, from Google, I'm gonna type in FAA, FAA drone zone and you'll see the FAA Drone Zone Access page right here. We're going to click on that. Now, this is where 
I've already logged in or it knows that I'm logged in. I've got a system notification. Uh, but if you haven't, make, just go ahead and log in. You should come. This is like the landing page. What I do is go to the FAA Drone Zone Services, which is this icon right here. And that takes me to this page where I can launch Drone Owners and Pilots Dashboard. Now, once I get here, I'm a Part 107 pilot. I'm also a private pilot, so I've got lots of different things in the FAA that I have to deal with. But this dashboard is where I go to to add a new drone. And so I'm just going to click Manage Device Inventory. When I get in here, you'll see the cart is empty. That's fine. I haven't put anything in the cart. But you'll see in here three drones that I've already registered. And notice I've canceled a couple out because I built some drones, sold them. And so they're no longer mine. They're no longer um, uh, active. But they don't delete them either. All right. So they keep them. They just keep the record. So what we're going to do is hit Add Device. And it says, first thing, does your drone broadcast FEA remote ID? Well, I have a DJI Maverick 3 Pro, and looking at the specs, yes, it does. And so if you don't have that, uh, it's something that the FAA is going to be requiring. And so you might as well go ahead and start buying drones or get a drone with a module added. All right, what type of drone? This is a standard remote ID, and I'm going to give it a nickname. I'm going to say... Um, Billy's Mavic 3 Pro. All right. And then the manufacturer is DJI. The model is Mavic 3 Pro. And then I'll just save y'all me having to look and try to get the number right. I already did this and put it in my um, clipboard. And that's my serial number. If you don't have your serial number and you have your Mavic 3 Pro, you can go in here and I'll show you, I'll add into this video a little way that you go through the menu and you can get that uh, serial number. So I'm gonna hit add device now. A device has been added to your shopping cart. Once you're finished, click done. All right, so I'm done. That's the only drone I have to register. Now, I can simply go and check out. There is a charge to register a drone. It's $5, so I'm gonna have to pay that. So acknowledge the FAA requirements, yada, yada, and yada. I understand. Okay. And here we go. You put your information in, you hit save, and that's my wife calling, but that's all there is to put your name in, put your purchase in, hit save, you're done. I always like to check my work. So I'm going to go back into the drone zone, make sure that this got added correctly. So here we are, home page. We're going to go to the Drone Zone Services and launch the dashboard. And here I'll see that I now have four devices, which is good because it was three before. And I see that two are active. Now if I go to Manage Device Inventory and Filter on Active, I'll see my Mavic 3 Pro. The one thing that might be helpful here is if you click on the registration, you'll see the card that can be printed for the drone and also there's one more step. The actual um, registration number needs to be somewhere on your drone. So I'm going to make a sticker or something like that and make sure it gets put on the drone. And while I'm here, I might as well go over what the FAA says about labeling your drone. Basically, you have to take the label that comes off of your certificate of registration somewhere here. And it must be, if you look, and this is straight, I'm on the FAA.gov website, straight off of it, how to label your drone. You gotta put this registration number on there. And then you have to, look at this, it must be visible on the outside surface of the drone. So no putting it inside the battery compartments or hiding it, they need to have it where it's visible on the drone. And you can have it engraved, you can do a permanent label, or as it says, permanent marker, doesn't matter. The big thing to do is to make sure you get it labeled before you fly. Another thing that we've got to do is make sure that we are current on our Part 107 flying certificate. Every two years, this is gonna come due. You're gonna be required to take some recurring training. At least that's the regs as they stated now. For me, I am a private pilot who has a 
current biennial review. So I'm covered under part 61. So it's just a little bit different than if you don't have a regular pilot's license and you just fly drones. So keep that in mind. There's different training, recurring training courses depending on your categorization of drone pilot. So for me, I went into faasafety.gov. I found the course. I took the course. It was like 45 questions. There was a review uh, training that led up to the test. Test was not that hard. And it requires you to get a 100%. So the way it worked was I got to the end of the test. I think I got a 97%. I missed one. It flagged the one that I missed. And then I reviewed it, made sure I understood it, corrected it, got 100%. When you're done, you will get a certificate. Certificate looks something like this, where it says you're good, it puts a date on it, and then you need to just flag something on your calendar two years from now, you're gonna need to take the test again to stay current. Okay, so I turned the lights down just a little bit for cinematic effect, but to be part 107 compliant for night flying, we've got to have anti-collision lights on the drone that are visible for three nautical miles away. Now what I did is, and I'll, I'll probably break into this video with a screenshot of the product, but I've got these Flytron um, LED lights and I put them in three places, so left, right, and on the top. And then they, they charge via a USB and one of the things that I wanted to do is I made sure that everything folds correctly and I also wanted to make sure that they weren't up here by the camera so I moved them back a little bit and um, that way everything folds up and gets put away without interfering with where these are placed. So to turn them on, there's a little button and hold it for three seconds and it should stop. There we go. And I gotta be careful not to look directly at that light because it is bright and it is intense. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the others on just for a second. Gotta find the light here. One, two, three, and that should do it. Oops, one, two, three. There we go, there we go. So now you got the red light, the white light, and let's get the green light just for, we need the, the absolute cinematic effect here. One, two, three, that should do it. There we go. Green, which I put on the right side, just like an airplane. Red on the left side. And then we've got the strobe in the back. All right, so there it is. The drone is now part 107 compliant. I'm getting all sorts of great little uh, shadows. And I'll be back. I'm going to turn these lights off to finish up the video. And we're done. Part 107 really isn't that scary, is it? Look, we got a new drone. We went and we registered that drone, paid our $5, and we got a registration number. We took that registration number, labeled the drone correctly. After that, we went and checked the currency of our flying certificate. Got to make sure we stay current. And then finally, since we we're planning on doing night flying, we purchased an LED uh, put that on, made sure it was FAA compliant and that it can be seen from at least three nautical miles away. And that's it. And I really hope that this video is helpful to you in staying part 107 compliant. Hope you have yourself a great day. God bless and take care.